All right. Hey, girls. And we are back. We're going to have a nice little game night. I told you guys I'm going to... Yes, I told you guys I was gonna liven it up this season, and man, I found me a, I found me a, a great game. And say, what's this game? We, we we well, we don't have any ad no no sponsorships for them. So <laughs> okay, I'm, well, I'm not giving this game. <laughs> okay, y'all gonna have to figure it out by the designs or something. But uh, we gonna get right into it. Let's go. So, let's go. Let's go. Let me pick from the bottom. Okay. All right. I feel most exotic when I think I feel most exotic when I travel. I love that. I love that. And why is that? What does traveling bring out in you? Oh man. I really love indulging in other people's cultures. Um, Yes. I think it's amazing to just see how other people just live, how blessed I am, mm-hmm. um, how people do things. The food is like, I feel like that's the glue to like bringing people together. That's like one of the things. Um, and also I'm, I'm one of one wherever I go. Like I, I just look the exotic Nope. So I feel like the exotic one. But um, yeah, I just feel my exotic there because I, I feel like everyone is just trying to, you know, let me show you my country or let me show you, you what we do. So, yeah, I just feel like the exotic. I feel like this is like a one time type of um, experience. You never know if I'm ever going to come back or not. But, yeah, that's when I feel the most exotic. I what about that. you? I would have to almost piggyback that but I'm not because I do love traveling I don't want to be there we're just saying the same thing there I do agree with almost everything that you said I love embracing culture learning about culture Mm -hmm. if you're going to travel someplace and don't engage in where you're at to me you wasted a trip that's just me personally so I'm going to go with I feel most exotic I'm going to just be in dress in my feminine presence Mm -hmm. so those times when you just have whether those heels I don't know women you know when you have that outfit on that has Mm -hmm. it going on we all know you feel it you just (laughs) right (laughs) so when I'm in my true feminine essence whether that's glam day jewelry just whatever outfit I have on I love mixing a little uh, tomboy with Yes, you know, time, time there, boy chic like, is what I call it. So I might call that whether that's the uh, distress shorts with mm-hmm. a tank, and then with a blazer, and yeah. then maybe with some heels. So you got a little bit. I love that energy. That's my energy. I love that mm-hmm. uh, little boy, but then a lot of feminine energy coming out. So right. when I'm in my girl zone. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate that's when I kind of feel most exotic a little pep in my step a little twitch yes go on and look at it okay <laughs> yes it's 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 crazy I I mean I do styling I do image consulting and styling so okay. when I dress women even men <laughs> they be like oh okay yeah yeah. yeah, I'm checking my. Oh, Check okay. My you can see their facial. Yeah, they're like, okay, yeah. Let I me feel go. this. Oh, oh yeah, let me take a picture. <laughs> um, and then when they go out, like, say, if it's like a guy or a girl, like they're um going on like a husband, like little getaway, they'll send me a text like, "Girl, my yeah. husband loves my. I want to do this again. Like, what is it? What? Yeah, I I like see it because you know, okay. there's people who just don't. They just they just put on clothes. They just put on clothes, and I'm like, girl, no. Thank like you. the the sizing of certain stuff, the yeah. colors, like they don't get into like just the things that you can do. The blocking, just different things. There's a way of wearing it, and yes, I agree. I love being dressed as well. So yes, I'm, when I'm when that feminine energy and clothing comes out, that's when I feel most exotic. I want to say another one too. I want to okay. say when skincare let me tell you some i will spend some money on dermatologists facials like any type of new yeah i will spend money yeah because i don't have any hair so yeah i don't have any hair so my money that would go for my hair would go to my face and my products so yeah no i yeah that yeah i feel excited for that too okay and something about when you come out with that glow and that extra oh yes exfoliating i love it too 
That's a, the, it. And, it, and you have beautiful skin. So embrace that. Child, it's, it's been a work. Well, it's beautiful. <laughs> yes. What's our next little card? We're not going to do this one because this one's Okay, we don't care about that one. Skip. That one's X, X rated. Okay, keep it too high, for, <laughs> too high for, uh, oh, there's another one. <laughs> uh oh. Okay, we're going to do this one. Okay, here we go. A time I, uh, wait, a time I unintentionally hurt someone. Oh, wow. Let me start with that one. A time I unintentionally hurt someone. Well, I'm a grandma. And oh. you definitely have to be cautious. Hey, Granny. Hey, Granny. <laughs> affectionately known as Cece. And, you know, the older you are, uh, the different your, the better your parenting style should become. It should become, you know, as you are uh, learning, you birthing your own children. Right. It's, it's hands on. So, you know, you're involved and you might be younger. I don't know. You're just, you're learning. Everything is new. So obviously, you know, 25, 30 years fast forward, you know, right. you're a mother, if God sees it, I think it's the reward of parenting. And mm -hmm. you realize that what you used to do is not necessarily the same way that you need to continue doing. You learn better. Right. No more. So I would say unintentionally hurt someone. It was probably not even two weeks ago with my granddaughter. Now also she is very, Aww. very smart very yes. advanced in her vocabulary and she vocalizes and expresses her emotions she's not one of she's gonna you hurt me you shouldn't have mm -hmm. said that and so that got me because she was trying to explain to me why she was throwing the sand off right. her shoes anyway and I was well you should have waited for me and I told you don't do that yet and you need to wait for a grand I was coming to you don't throw the sand now mm -hmm. you got sand everywhere you hurt me. You yelled at me, sis. And I was like, okay. Yeah, that might have been a little over the top. And so, but what I learned is, and mm -hmm. I used to do this even with my own kids, when you you have to make amends, you need to apologize. You right. need to do better. You need to validate their feelings. Let right. them know that it was never your intent to hurt them. And that CC is human and I'm going to make mistakes. And I, I see how I overreacted and I should have been softer in my approach. But right. I also need you, we're going to correct that. I mm -hmm. also need you to listen to me. Right. I'm advising you not to do something. That doesn't mean you keep doing it. But I was definitely wrong in how I spoke to you. So unintentionally, she's seven years old, almost eight, but still, it doesn't matter. Validate, especially as women. Mm -hmm. um, we are raising a young woman. I want her to always be vocal. I don't yes. want her to hold her tongue and go with the flow. Someone has hurt you, express it. Say it. Right. Let them know. So uh, I hope that that impacted her more than mm -hmm. the fact. I hope at the end of the day that what she learned was not that CC hurt your feelings, but that right. CC can make mistakes too. But that I apologize, I corrected it, but I also still need for you to listen to me. Right. So, yourself? A time I unintentionally hurt someone, I'm going to have to say um, the talk with the adult talk with your parents. Ooh. Um, They are very old school. Okay. <laughs> and some of their ways just does not fit with what's going on now. And um, they also just need to stop looking at me as a child. Mm. I am their child. Never, never stop. I know, but I am their child, of course. I'm, but I'm an adult child. Yeah, I'm an adult. I'm 35. I mean, I'm the child that actually lived the world because mm -hmm. I've moved seven times. Okay. And um, I just shared with them my thoughts on a family matter that I was not too happy about and okay. why I don't really want to come around. Okay. And they took offense to it. Um, yeah, and I, I just we were trying I was trying to just unpack as to why do they feel away when it's so obvious mm -hmm. like I'm not the only one stating the problem there's also other people stating this problem and um yeah they just felt hurt about it and they kind of just were well my, I'm gonna say my mother was more on the defensive of course side and my father was just kind of just mute 
So I'm going to have to say it was, it's, it's that. It was a personal conversation between family. And, you know, I think that's pretty sad. I uh, saw a post or a meme. I'm sure you probably have one time that in the black community, it's sad that we will still welcome. I'm not saying that's what the conversation was. So please, mm-hmm. that's not what I'm getting with that. It's just, this came to mind. In the black community, it's sad that we will still welcome the abuser or the person who hurt us to the family reunions and to the Sunday family cookouts and that kind of things. But we mm-hmm. will not validate the person who's speaking up as that this is what's going on. I also feel that we feel that family, we are required to engage with them, that we're required to uh, be around them. And we're family by blood. I don't have to have you in my personal space and I don't have to have uh, myself around you. I don't care who that family member is. That's everything from mother, father, sister, brother, grandmama. Uh, It doesn't matter if we're family. I get that. You're my whatever. But I don't have to put you in my personal space and my synergy and my energy is important to me. Mm-hmm. And if you are, uh, as they say, you're not going to break my soul and I'm not going to be around well, that. You're not I'm not going to put myself in that. And yeah, they have different beliefs. That's, that's it's, it's, it's around that premise. But, yeah, that's their belief is no, like, no, no, family's family. We got to stick together. No, I don't. Because this is hindering. Yes. And a lot I, of things after the age of, after I left your house, your I child, left at 18. Oh, so that's I, that's why I said I am the child that has been long gone. I have my car. I graduated June 3rd and moved out June 6th. Can yes. Sis was gone. Yeah. And it yeah. had nothing to do with had to leave. My parents mm-hmm. prepared me all 12 years of school of uh, mm-hmm. being ready, being prepared. It, this was not a news flash. We didn't have to right. sit down and go, so what you going to do with your life? This was not something. <laughs> we were ready to go, ready to go. Independent. I don't, don't get me wrong. When I say ready to go, I don't necessarily mean I didn't make mistakes when you had independence. I mean, I was Ooh, ready. Oh, I made a lot of mistakes. I had a job. I had a full-time job. I was in school. I mm-hmm. still had college. I was on a track scholarship, but I still maintained a full-time job. I had an apartment. I was ready and prepared. I was not time. ready. <laughs> I was not ready. I just moved out. No plan. They still afforded me my, I was, I was effing up so much, but I I got it together. I got it together, but no, I had no plan. Oh, I'm going to this state. Nope. I'm picking up and going to this state. Those are hard lessons, but they're great lessons. I think it was, I think it's the greatest thing that shaped me. And thankfully they have paid for me until I was 25. Wow. That's Cause I know a lot of people, a lot of parents would not, but I effed up on their dime. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, after two years of, you know, trying to pick myself up. Cause they, like I said, after 25, they were like, all right, you're, you're, you're an adult adult. Like you're finished Ooh. school. <laughs> like, go ahead. I was just like, yeah, no, I got to get this together. Like my budgeting is terrible. Yeah. I was not prepared. Okay. None. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Wow. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, child. As I said, I am not fit to be anyone's mother in my twenties. Well, no. I would say, you know, it, it, I, I'm glad you recognize that. The unfortunate thing uh, is when people think that this is these little these are kids are just something you can just play with and you can just take no, them to the return store. That, yeah. No. I was no yourself. one's role model. Yeah. You I was nobody's yourself. role model. I listen. No. And these things, they, they, kids are expensive. They are I see. expensive from whether it is medical, daycare, doctors, doctor, daycare, Similac. So <laughs> everything, everything's expensive. And I don't think yes. a lot of people are prepared for the financial. That's just finance. That's not necessarily also your time, your energy, uh, lack of personal space, lack of couple time, lack of everything. Like they are, everything you is still got a village. Up. You truly have to have a village. It's a lot. So don't do it if you're not ready to sacrifice. There's a lot of sacrifice. Yeah, I already know. I was I was not dumb, but I would play dumb with certain stuff. But I hair and kid, I was like, yeah, no, take the hair off. And I'm not having no kids at 20. Okay. We know how not to. Yikes. Who child. Now she said, oh, that took me there for a minute. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> she got so many... Ex- she got so many sex ones. Well, come on now. Shuffle Am I in the sex around. piles? I know. Shuffle them around. Let's go to the bottom there. All right. Let me go to the bottom. My story of heartbreak. Hmm. 
Wow, which one? I was like, well, that's a lot. It can be hard. If you're human, you've had heartbreak. Heartbreaks. I'm going to have to say my heart broke. Um, my last one, I'm going to have to say when my when my cousin died. Okay. I, um... He, yeah, he faced Tommy because he felt like he was having like a heart attack or something was going on. He did not know. And, you know, like a guy doesn't want to call the cops or cause a commotion. And luckily I convinced him to call the cops and he was having That's a heart good. attack. That's good. And yeah, so yeah. Um, he got there. But like a few hours later, they're like, well, he's no longer. He's not here. Yeah, he's just he's brain dead, and um, yeah, my heart was just broken. Like if if he didn't call the cops, like or the ambulance, he would be lying in his apartment dead. Wow, that's really sad. Oh, so I was just very sad. Was this your? Uh, I know you have fourteen or thirteen aunts and uncles. Uh, um, is this one of your cousins that you always very close yep. with? You know, yeah. Yep. That's pretty sad. Ew. Was this yeah. one of the first? Pure cousins that yes yeah yes and I'm at that age now where um we're starting to lose aunts and uncles or you know my family members are now getting 70 80 years old so that's you know that happens we already have our mind accepted that (laughs) with age comes death we have that but those ones I think that are friends and that are your peers whether cousins like you just said I think those hit they hit ex- it, it hit extremely. Yeah. And the crazy thing was his birthday was a week in a day before he mm-hmm. died, and also he we were just talking about how my uncle, his dad, passed away that same exact age. His mm-hmm. father passed away because of alcoholism, yeah. and he passed away because of something totally different. So I just, I don't know. I was just very messed up for a very long time. I can understand that. I can. I really can. And, you know, I don't think death, first off, I always say this, I don't care whether it's somebody that's ill Mm -hmm. or someone that's a surprise. Death always hurts. It's going to always hurt the living. That's what it is. I mean, it hurts. We're never ready to say goodbye. doesn't matter what your spirituality is. I don't care what it is. You're never ready to say goodbye. We're just not ready. We're selfish. We're selfish humans. We want that loved one to remain here with us. That's just logical. And how it is. I don't, so I, and I've had it across the board as well. I've had people that have been long term sufferers with health ailments that pass, and mm-hmm. I'm, it was still hard. Then I've right. had those 3 a.m. phone calls, very similar to what you had. Uh, had a cousin who had a car accident. I would mm-hmm. say that was the last one that really hurt me uh, about two years ago. He was all, he had just celebrated his 40th birthday, and uh, he had a car accident one, two o'clock in the morning. No drugs, alcohol, and that type of thing. Uh, they really don't know. They don't know whether he fell asleep because it was so early in the morning mm-hmm. or whether uh, he, he just ran off the road and had a car accident. So he had one of those two, three o'clock in the morning phone calls that your your cousin has passed. And that, that one, I would say, because it's such a surprise, like I just said, somebody's right. driving home. They're not sick. They're driving home and they're not here. Uh, and again, almost very similar. Uh, my peer cousin, we're very close. Mm-hmm. He's one of my, he's only my second male cousin. My first six cousins on my maternal side are mm-hmm. all females. We're all girls. Oh, wow. And so the first two were boys and they were siblings. So he, we, we were all so close because we finally had a boy. We had a male cousin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that one was one of those that's like, oh, he's not here. Oh, my gosh. This is a hard one. And um, and I think also I felt that empathy for my aunt and uncle. That yeah. was their second. They only had two sons, and within oh. four years, they had lost both their sons. By this sounds like my aunt. By she aunt. lost her husband and her child yeah. like a year after each other. I thought that was just so crazy. I thought that was so. They have gone from having you know two sons to none, having none. So I think it was also that. I think that's just that embedded empathy side that we have. Like, oh mm. my god, what else can happen to them? But also, I think it was like I just said that he was not sick. It was an accident, car accident, and it was just, it was horrible. And and like we just said, the peer, the cousins, I think when you start having, losing people across that spectrum, right. across that line, those hit a little bit harder. They hit a little bit harder. Yes. So, okay. Yeah, I was down bad. Yeah. It was it was pretty bad. But shout out to my, my grieving therapist. I know I annoyed her. Therapy is the key. I have two, we have four adult children. We have mm-hmm. two that are in therapy. Uh, I was the, very much an advocate of 
we're going to get away from black people. Pray about it. Turn it over to the Lord. Give it to Oh, God. God. That's my grandmother got me. God rest her soul. But I'm like, Grandma, God is not going to always save us. We have to save ourselves. You know, I don't say it. Seek therapy. <laughs> Seek therapy. I have it. Yeah, no, I I've had it. Advocate. <laughs> Of therapy, I'm a strong believer, and I checked and I have let my both my young adults know it has nothing to do with something's not right with you. It has everything to say that something is right with you. That you know enough about yourself to know I need to speak to someone else. And you can't always go take your problems to a peer, to a sibling, no, to, to your partner. You need to be able to communicate with someone. And I was very much advocating with them. Make sure you have the right type of therapist. Everybody yes. is not just sit there and just listen and go. Mm-hmm. That's, what, what, how do you feel about that? <laughs> what do you think? Right. So what are we going to do? That's not a therapist. That's a listener. You can sit there and just record yourself of all you're going to do is talk. You need somebody that can engage right. with you and can build you and strengthen you and allow you to be vulnerable and build you back up and tell you when you're right and tell you when you're wrong and get you going so that if they're not doing that, then that's not a real therapist for you. You don't need someone to just sit there and listen to you. Yeah, you definitely, I definitely have an episode on this. Okay. Uh, therapy. Okay. Yes. Therapy. Um, I'm we advocate. set out, yeah, we set out um, vetting questions to ask because you definitely, it's like the, when you're dating, like you have to make sure your therapist gels with you. It's and it's not going to be, okay, I got it on the first try. Like you, you may try a few times because I've definitely tried a few times and mm-hmm. I knew the second round because this is my second round doing it. Okay. Um, I knew I wanted an African-American woman. My mm-hmm. first therapist I've ever had, she was Hispanic. Mm-hmm. But um, she introduced me to emotional intelligence. So mm-hmm. I thought she was great. But um, the second one, I knew I had like African American. I wanted African American basically because of the family dynamic mm-hmm. aspect. I was like, no one and else understanding. Will understand it. Yeah. yeah, and understanding. She, 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 he, or she will then understand how the black culture family works, and we work differently. We work cool. very differently. Black family is other ones that one of the stronger ones that feel like you stick by your family no matter what. And sometimes, so then you have some people, let's say, let's just hypothetically say, I'll go, I'm not talking to my mother. Mm-hmm. See, my reaction to that, when I hear somebody, let's say, I go, oh, McCarthy, when's the last time you talked to your mom? You said, girl, I ain't talked to my mom about 10 or 15 years. There is a certain, if, if, if you are black, it is received as, girl, why are you talking to your mom? You only got one mama. You better talk to your mama. Your oh, why, wow, yeah. That's not me. My thing is, oh, that's that's really unfortunate. I'm 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 sorry to hear that. But however, however, what is the reason or why are you not speaking? Because see, every mother, I say this, every mother is not a mama. No. So you're already putting the blame on someone as if, well, you only have one mama. You gotta respect your mama because mm-hmm. the Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father. You don't know what the dynamics are of that situation of why they're not communicating. And sometimes Correct. it's for better health. Just Correct. Every every mother's not a mama. Every daddy, every father's not a daddy. No. <laughs> so, yikes. I don't know, but yeah, I yeah, you definitely have to vet your therapist out yeah. and know what your end goal is because they're only gonna they're only gonna be able to work with whatever you you know provide them. You with. provide and being vulnerable and telling the truth. Why Correct. You your therapist? Why are you lying to your therapist? You can lie to yourself. Yeah. You're you're not gonna get anything out of therapy. I mean, they're not gonna say anything because they that's that's the law. Like they can be locked up for that. So you might as well be truthful to them. But I found it very beneficial. I loved mine. She was going for her PhD. Okay. I loved her. She she uh she asked me how did I learn and I told her I'm a visual learner. Okay. So she gave me a lot of like exercises for me to do and it was amazing. She had me do like a resume on what I would want to look for for my friendships, for my new set of friendships as I'm like going through a new path with my life. Mm-hmm. And then she asked me like how do I see myself? And she did it too. So she was like, this is what I gathered from you from X amount of sessions with you. So I thought her, um, yeah, I thought her sessions were amazing. Her approach was the, it's different. I like that. I like that. I even like that. So. Yeah. So I'm just like, you got to really vet. You gotta vet. I like that. What yeah. Shout out, to, shout out to my therapist. Cause we are, st- we are still on for Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. 
the next question. My views about love changed when... Mm. <sighs> my views about love changed. Uh, so my husband and I have... That, that I'm married to. This is we're second marriages for each other. We okay. Before, so we're a blended family. We're almost been together for married 19 years coming up. Uh, my first marriage was uh, in my 20s, early 20s, and we stayed married for right. almost 10 years. That's okay. What my two biological daughters. That's the marriage that they derived from. I would say my views on love changed then. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. I'm a firm believer of what someone shows you is who they are. And the only thing you can change, so I'm going to put it in the ladies, of a, I'm going to put it with ladies. Only, there's nothing you can change about a man but diapers. Nothing. It took me the longest time when that marriage devolved and even when it was dissolving to realize, mm-hmm. like I kept saying, he changed, he changed, he did, he did. This right. is how the, as far as me filing for the divorce and moving forward. And I had to come to the maturity level and understanding one day I sat back and said, he didn't change. He stayed the same. Mm-hmm. I changed. Cass changed. He, yeah. Who he was when I met him when I was 16 and he was 18, he was the same person when we divorced when I was 28. He was the exact same. The mm-hmm. problem was what he presented to me when we were teenagers was enough. Suitable for that, that, that version. That time, yeah. At that stage. And then as we're maturing, we're married, we're parents. And he's mm-hmm. still in my mind doing teenager childish behaviors and things. Right. Where I'm more, you, you, we need to be evolving as adults. I mean, I'm a mama, I'm a wife. Why are you still acting like a single man? And I don't mean necessarily doing a single man. I'm thinking just he was a, even financial. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I want to, hey, we need to, why are we renting? You need to be buying one. Why are you, he was in a trade that he could make cash money daily in a trade. Right. So he was a one of, if he made a thousand dollars, he'll spend a thousand and one with the mindset that I'll go make another thing tomorrow. Well, you can't mm-hmm. live life that way. That's an immature way of living life. Right. So that's what I mean by we evolved differently. And so I realized it, just one day in one of those, when you're going through a divorce and you're sitting around going, what happened? I had to sit there even with therapy and go, he remained the same. If anything, he's sitting back going, why are you not that fun, free, loving, didn't care person? It was good for you 10 years ago, but it's not good for you now. Mm-hmm. And so with that, I learned definitely going into my second relationship, second marriage, which was then about six years later. What you see is what you get. If you have a problem with somebody from the first time you all meet and it's something that's a deal breaker, it's going to be a deal breaker two years later, 20 years later, right. 20 years later. Why are you putting up? It was a deal breaker then. It was something you didn't want right. to put up with then. It's what you just chose to sit there and go, um, it's not that big of a thing. No, it is going to be a bigger thing. It really is. The more you're in that relationship, that minor thing is going to be a bigger issue. It really is. So I, my second relationship, second marriage, came with maturity and realizing if I don't want something in someone, I'm mm-hmm. not going to put up with it. You know, the hardest questions you can ever ask, ask them on that first date. Ask them on the first, ask you the conversation. I don't do first dates. If the conversation, I've already screened out probably 90% of the things that I need to ask you on the conversation. Why do I need to go sit across and have coffee with you? And I can ask you on the phone, what do you want out of a relationship? When was your last relationship? Where do you see this going? What are you looking for? Do you have kids? Are you employed? Do you take drugs? Are you home? I can ask all that on the phone. <laughs> right. So if any of those are no, no, yes, yes, why do we need to go out and have dinner? Yeah. My therapist, the one that I just tell, she, man, oh man, she has opened so much. She helped me do pre-vetting questions. Yes. Like, this is just like my, this is just like a business. Yes. I'm like, everything is, everything is coming. So she was just like, what are non-negotiables? Like what are hard non-negotiables? You have to set those as pre-vetting. So yeah, mine are like, mine knocks out so many black men. I don't what? like. Yeah, I know. I don't care, but I'm just saying, I don't like smokers. Like, I don't like being around smoke. Smoke is, no, no type of smoke. I don't care if it's e-smoke. Yeah, no smoker. Um, And I don't, I don't date men with kids. Like, that's enough. See, 
I don't blame you. I was up. I since I had two children, I it was very specific. It was a requirement. You had to have children with me. Yeah, and no, not I'm not. Not most bird mamas. You had, to, you had to understand that responsibility that I have it. But I do. If I had no children, I would have not wanted a man to have children. That's a requirement. Yeah, I don't feel like you would have. I would never be your your priority. That's the that's the number one and number two. And you understand that. Yeah, and number two. Um, what was my second one? Oh, I don't know if I'm no a rally. Smoking, no children. That's that's only two. It's only two. Those are my two non-negotiables. I'm like no. Um, I'm. I mean, I don't care if you've been divorced. Like I'm not. I don't care about that stigma. Um, if you had a bad past, I mean, as long as I know that you've or if I law, yeah, as long as I know that you've been taking the steps to fix it, and you, yeah, like I'm fine with that. Like I'm not perfect in the past either. Yeah, those are my two hard non-negotiables. I don't even hand out my phone number. If you checked out the, either one of those things, that's a no. I agree. When I was dating, uh, during the six years that I was divorced, I screened and vetted. My husband said that he is a retired government employee. He said I asked him harder, more detailed questions than he did for his assessment to get into his field. <laughs> we were on the phone, Makara, for eight hours. Wow. Now it didn't start off that way. It's just the conversation was also. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't just sitting there going. Yeah, it flowed. It, it flowed. It was just conversation. So when right. he would say something, like, okay, I, I feel that. Okay, but I feel, and this is just me. The first date, the first conversation. There's no love there. There's no love that you don't know this I need, person. Yeah, I need to see if I like being around you because I don't there's like being no around love. a lot of people. So yeah, is that not the best, most important time to ask the questions that are drop it if you know i'm at the stage in my life where i would like to be married in two years i'm not playing i'm not just gonna be dating just to be dating i'm on mm -hmm. the path for marriage and you meet someone who goes oh i just got out of a long-term relationship or marriage. okay well we can end this date right now check what please is that yeah i want to know exactly yeah. i'm You're checking not going to change his mind and do you want him to change yours yeah so, no that's the best time to think, oh, oh, okay, it was nice meeting you. I I wish Thank you much success in your endeavors. If I ever see you out again, hey, what's up? Bye. But there's no, no point of us going out. Why are we yeah, going out? No. I'm yeah, looking for marriage and you're looking for fun. No, we, we, no, there's no change in my mind. But I'm going to have to say my views about love change when I got out into the world. I thought seeing what my parents were and like I said, my parent, my mom's side is so huge. Yeah. I was like in a cocoon. And then my father's side, like his is kind of like semi big. So I don't know. I didn't see much. You could kind of say I was sheltered. And then I ran track. Like I, yeah, that, that was my, that was my childhood. I don't yeah. say it was bad, but I was just in a cocoon yeah. where I didn't really need much friends. That's probably why I don't like being around um, large female groups but um, yeah but when I got into the world and I saw different versions of love um, when I was like a certified nurse assistant working for nursing homes I saw how old people kind of operated I know one Pacific male that I had he was an engineer for Volkswagen he would, okay. we, would, we, would we would look through the photo album and I'm like oh is this your wife look at her looking like a dime okay. <laughs> She had passed okay. away and he was like, yeah, you, he, he, he told me this one story how um, he would always tell his wife to close a deal. He would bring his wife along all the time because it was a strategic move so that the wives can talk to each other during the closing deal. And he's like, that is a marriage is not for love. Like you can you, you can be fortunate enough to have love in the ingredients, but marriage is a business. And I did not get it. I did not get it. But I mean, I'm still listening. Like, I'm not one of those young people that are like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I listened. He would tell me, you know, I would tell my wife. My wife was a stay-at-home mom, stay mom. She got whatever she wanted. But when I told her, you know, go back to the salon or whatever he would say to her, she would get all dolled up, put on her diamonds, yeah. put that fur coat. That's how I was like, oh, look at her. A dime because he because okay. she already knew it was large money on the table yes. and we need yeah this is your part to do what you do 
and close that deal so we can and the conversation in the car with that husband and wife and they get back in the car she's gonna be i like them you should do that all right and he's going to follow in suit with what his wife just suggested in business he's gonna be like okay then i'll call him tomorrow and let him know we're gonna do this because that's how women are yes so yeah my yeah my view of love definitely changed when i got out to the world and just experienced so many ways of of loves and learning about love languages okay. and how people receive it like that stuff was never talked about um yeah I think. what's the example of your parents marriage at the time that you were in their household where are they uh are they Cliff and Claire <laughs> were they you know what I'm saying are they traditional home and were they uh good times were they what what's their energy what did you see as a marriage so both of my parents were working Okay. Uh, parents, okay. my mom would pick me up. She she would yeah. My father would take me to school because my mom would get up like four or five o'clock in the morning. She used to, she used to work for L'Oreal, um, and then pick me up. She would pick me up. My father would take me to school. My father has his own business, so mm-hmm. I saw entrepreneurship very early. Um, my mom is has masculine energy in her. Okay. okay. Cause she has brothers around her. Yes, so brothers. vulnerability for me was hard. And mm-hmm. I expressed that to her as an adult because I saw the way she operated mm-hmm. and she is not very nurturing when you need to be nurturing as a woman. Did you see affection between them? Did you see? Yeah, uh, I saw affection uh, with them. Did you see uh 50, 50 on finances? Did you see dad brought home the check? Mom did the gro- what did you see as far as the dynamics of what you saw that a marriage think. was? I saw my father handling the household things and okay. then my mother would take care of me and my sister. She would handle the groceries. My mom is definitely cooking. My father does mm-hmm. not cook. He cooks mm-hmm. like a couple of things and that's that's about it. Um, my father would take us so um, me and my sister like on a trip in the summertime like he would take two weeks off. That was our quality time. Uh, so like we would go camping we would okay. drive across the country mm-hmm. um we would go out to dinner as like a family for birthdays um when it's like yeah when it's each of our birthdays um my mom will like drop will like draw on the mirror with soap like happy birthday and put balloons on the um thing we will have family dinners uh, when it's birthdays. So we had like family time, but then there was a shift when my mother got like fibromyalgia, she got sick. So that was kind of like a rude awakening. And then I'm also getting serious in AAU track and field. Okay. So there was a bit of a rift when it came to finances. Cause you know, you got to pay for all these races for AAU. Um, I'm also not in the house. So I'm also, it's kind of a blur for me, but for my sister, she's going to have a totally different experience. Totally different. She, she was in the house and she's older. Okay. Um, awesome. so, so yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just, it was just a lot of things I needed to reprogram as a woman mm-hmm. and just learn to see that there are just so many spectrums of love do you when see I, your parents' from marriage as I aspire? No. Or this is what I have learned to not do. Learn to not do. Okay. Okay. This is what I've learned. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm that. not that. I, I may look like my mother, but yeah, what my needs are and how I want and how I am as a woman, I am not her. Okay. That's not yeah, I, I am not her. <laughs> my parents, are, although I grew up with married parents, by the time I, matter of fact, oh. I said I divorced at 28. When I was 27, my parents got divorced after almost 40 years of marriage or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, so that was a shocker. And you know, you grew up. I grew up with the mindset of almost having a cliff and clear mom and dad. Uh, my mm-hmm. mom and dad I, were teenage parents, so I'm only 15 years apart from my mom and 16 years apart from my my dad. Uh, so we grew up together. I had young parents. Oh wow! And, uh, I but they, my dad was a veteran. He did everything he did. We homeowner. We lived in the suburbs, the whole nine. And they also worked opposite shifts. So my dad was also an entrepreneur. I hear that a lot. So, so mm-hmm. he he they worked opposite shifts. So they worked opposite shifts. So we never had to have a daycare, uh, or or come home by ourselves. So our mom worked days, and our dad pretty much worked evenings and overnight. So we always mm-hmm. had a parent at home. Very strict 
parenting environment, couldn't date or anything until you 16 years old and all the nine my dad had myself and my sister. Uh, love, I can't say I saw love in their relationship, but did I not see love in their relationship because they were really not there together that much. It, it, right. They, their time together it's was cool a lot. But when they would do house parties and you sneak around the corner and you sneaking down the hallway and you seeing your mom and dad down there dancing and jiving mm-hmm. and slow dancing, I mean, there was love between them. But I can't say I saw flowers or date night or go in the kitchen and you see them kissing on each other in the neck and that type of thing. I didn't see yeah, that. I saw it. Yeah, I, I didn't saw it. That. There's pictures, there's date night and I know I pulled something of theirs and I'm, they're like, I'm like, what's this? And they're like, you're not supposed to know about this. So no, I saw it. But it kind of definitely dwindled when my mother got into that sickness. Um, yeah. But yeah, my mother is definitely has more masculine energy. Masculine energy. She's domineering. And she's loud. And I'm just like, yo, like, just chill. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I learned. And I, I thought uh, one of the funny that you said that question was one of the reasons why I actually went over and filed a divorce in my first marriage was my little girl at that time. The oldest one, she was four, made him turning five. And she said one of the hardest questions, just in the kitchen, just walked in the kitchen, the innocence of a child. They say out of the mouth of babes. And she said, why is it every time my daddy is around, you're not happy? Ooh, the tr- the kids are truth serum, okay? Why is it every time my daddy is around, you're not happy? It's like, you're happy when it's us three, but when he's here, you're not happy. And I sit there and go, what is it? What kind of example? At that point, I was in a marriage to stay for kids. I think that's the biggest mistake you could ever do. Well, what am I showing my two daughters, female, women, that this is what a marriage is? Yikes. I'm their example. I'm their example. They're going to either aspire to have this type of relationship mm-hmm. or they're going to run from this type of relationship. That's 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 all they're going to do. They're going to aspire. They're going to love this or they're going to run from it. They're going to copy this. And this is the type of men they're going to have in their life. And this is what they're going to think love is. Unhappy, mm-hmm. miserable. I'm just here for kids. We're just here doing business. Or they're going to realize there's more out there. And I had to yes. realize that uh, it's time for me to make a change. I can make a change. And I did. Yikes. Yeah. Four years old. Why are you never happy when my daddy is in the room? Yeah, that's why I'm so glad. I'm just, <laughs> it was not young. Cause I was just like, child, I'm not a role model. You will not get me pregnant. Okay. <laughs> no, them kids be like, why is my daddy such a, I'm like, whoa, where'd you learn that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no kids every, are every, truth serums. No man. Every dating, every dating potential partner is not meant to be a daddy. Just, yeah, no, a... I don't. I don't want to date anyone with kids. That, that's, that, I'm sorry. Thanks so much, but I don't get involved with men it's with kids. Very wise thing to do. It's very mature. I agree. Yeah, best of luck. I agree. And why should you say you don't have any children? He doesn't have anybody that he has to partner with you about. So. Right. Very or, or or I don't want to deal with your regrets because some a lot of the times those are one night stands. Mm-hmm. No, nobody want to be honest with those conversations. Bitter? But yeah, no. Joe, I know. On this little question. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> My greatest power struggle is with. Oh man, I know this. Go ahead. You got to get me going. On. My greatest power struggle is with feeling like I'm good enough. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the greatest. Uh, the cattiness. This all okay. stems from our last um, conversation. Yeah, my yeah, th- my mother's side is just very catty. It's very competitive among the women. Mm-hmm. And they have pit us against each other us meaning like the cousins or oh well my child doing it while you over there in Egypt so I just have always felt like it's not good enough so let me not let me just keep continue on working harder like it's it's just not good enough um wow wow why does that validation mean so much to you you think I'm not, I'm not sure if it's validation I just feel like it's just so ingrained because it's been since I was young Mm. it's just very hard to shake off because it's it's still something that I'm still working through through therapy. It's not, it's definitely not validation because if that's the case, then I mean, I wouldn't have done so many things. That you've done. 
Correct. Um, yeah, it's just so ingrained. It's like ridiculous. And I, I, I know that competitiveness you're talking about, you know, and that parent conversation. Susie Q made all A's this semester. Well, yeah. Bobby Jimmy is going to, I, I know what you're saying. That, and you're sitting there going, wow, what is it? I didn't even bring up like this conversation, like why they're like, oh, you got a promotion. Well, guess what? Such and such is a supervisor. Like, who cares? Like, you you ask me if anything's new. So, yeah, it's, like, very ingrained. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I've distanced myself from my parents. I mean, I'm sorry I said my parents. From my family members since my yes. grandmother has passed. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just hard to shake off. That's been on my list of fixing f- with my therapist. But it's definitely not validation. No. Do you have high achieving cousins? <sighs> Which in, one? In their career path, the ones that I was on the maternal side, do you feel that the competitiveness gave them an edge that everybody felt like that now they need to have something that they need to achieve toward? Or is it something that you feel like that everyone went the opposite of, I'm not you and you're not going to make me be on this pedestal that I'm not? Uh, well, the one that I keep getting compa- compared to the most mm-hmm. is a female cousin who was married to a former um, NBA player. Okay. So, and everyone else is just, I'm sorry, but they're a bum. Yeah. They're a bum. They, they still live with their parents. Like, oh, they haven't, God. yeah, they haven't done anything. So, um, I'm the one that's like the black sheep that does the opposite but yet they'll try to just continue to draw me in with the cousin that's the high achiever but mm-hmm. she's pretty much using nepotism with her husband like you, you you're yeah. kind of a bit of a claim of a to fame is an ex then that's not a claim to fame I yeah mean, you <laughs> you're you're a beautiful woman i i will admit that but i mean if it wasn't for that and also your your mom my aunt mm-hmm. trapping trapping men because that's what she used to do she passed the skills on and he taught her well Correct. Uh, but yeah, that's what it is. See, on both sides of my family, I would have to say, and, and, and I do mean my initial core. Uh, so my initial core cousins, we're definitely high achievers, mm-hmm. uh, but it's not a competitive thing. I would say almost every single one of us are college educated and degree in multiple degrees. Most have masters, higher spectrum type of degrees, nurses, mm-hmm. PhDs, attorneys. Um, but it's nothing that we set amongst each other. It's not like, right. well, she just did that. I need to go do that. Oh, and we enjoy, all of us, as weird as thing is, we all enjoy travel. All of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it is because we didn't see our parents traveling. They worked. They didn't get a chance oh. to travel. Travel was going home to mom and dad for vacation. That was the song. But they didn't oh, get a chance God. to go traveling. They didn't right. expand their not. No, I can't say that about my dad. He was in a, he's a veteran, but he was a veteran from war. He, he was in war, so that was different traveling. Uh, and then having young parents, they were just trying to survive as well. But uh, one caliber that I have noticed on both sides of the family, paternal and maternal, is that we're all high achievers. We set that bar pretty high amongst each other to excel and do great own businesses have higher level degrees be entrepreneurs um so that's a good thing so i was just wondering what's the i don't know the competitiveness I think it's from the fact that you all just want to do better or do you um do i you know i don't know the, tr- the the full story i would say because i'm only 35 and it stems back to my grandfather, which I've never met. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, from the from the talks of the cousin that passed away, my close one, he would tell me, you know, where this arrogance would stem from. Because, yeah, they're arrogant. Um, and it kind of just dwindled away. Mm-hmm. But they still have pa- they still passed the facade on to their offsprings. Okay. So my cousins are the offsprings, and that's why I'm like, my cousins, a lot of them are bums. I'm sorry to say, but 
You're yeah. you're 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 talking shit about me, but yet you're still you live in a room with, a room. with yeah. yeah, you're in a room with what you call it, or you're living at my grandmother's house with yeah, so no, don't don't talk to me until you yeah. lived on your own and I've been living on my own for over a decade. So well, I can see why they would deem you as the bougie one. It's not that you're the bougie one, you're the independent one. That's yeah, child boss says another <laughs> story. That wouldn't hurt me. <laughs> yeah, bye. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the full story. They the competitiveness is just ridiculous, and I'm just too young to okay. even understand. I I don't want to understand. I don't even talk to them. So best of luck to them. <laughs> Ciao. I hope you enjoy. I like this game. I like good. it. I'm liking this. We have time for another one. We have time. Yes. For another one? Okay. This I is cool. It. It Keep the conversation going. going. Icebreakers. Something about my culture I wish other people understood. Oof. Oh, deep. I already got one at the top. That's deep. Um, I'm sorry to offend you guys. White <laughs> people, Indians, Asians, blue people, whatever. Yeah. Um, every black person is not the same no. Every black person does not speak ghetto. We do not speak ghetto knees. Um, we don't come from. Yeah, we, there's there's class. Yeah, there's classism in every culture. Like black people that. are not the same. I know my first job fresh out of college and I, they hire me to be like the black translator. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, is this what you was? Am I supposed to be the black token girl? Like, I don't, I don't know. Overtown Miami. Like I'm from New Jersey. Like what? I don't know what they're saying. I agree with that. So wholeheartedly 100% that, uh, you know, we don't as a cohesive culture, we don't all get along and agree. I see stupidity on TV, too. When I'm watching the news, I'm like, oh, Lord, don't let them be black. Lord, don't let these people be black. And then here they come. And it, we don't I like mean, I can usually tell by the name. <laughs> we don't like it either. When the crimes are committed and it's something, we, we're we not all, I'm not raw, raw, raw team black just because right. we're black. We do stupid stuff and we're not all, we realize there's dumbness, there's uh, crime, there's, we're tired of black on black crime, too, as well. So we... Everybody doesn't think alike. And so I agree with that. You know, just because yeah. I'm black doesn't mean I'm team black. Yeah, no. I wish, in a perfect world, I wish I went to two HBCU, HBCU colleges. Like, I love it. But when I came out, I was just like, all black people are not like this. No. I had to learn the hard way and it broke. It broke my, it just broke. I'm, I was like, oh, I can't, I can't talk to every black person like this. Yes. So, I mean, in a perfect world, I wish, but no, every black person is not the same. We don't have the same struggles. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this girl is talking about over here. I, I don't know. I've never, I've only been on food stamps when I was in college. That was because yeah. of my college. Yeah, like I, my parents were working. They gave me money. They afforded me and I didn't even need to get on food stamps, but I got on it just, just because. It was offered. Yeah, I agree with you. I, don't, I think they, I wish the people, everybody that's black didn't struggle. Not everybody. You know, some of us didn't struggle. That, that doesn't, right. that's, that's not putting past the struggle. Uh, you know, 400 years ago, we were slaves. I get that. But that's not every single person didn't grow up in the hood. Every single person didn't grow up in Section 8 apartments. Every single person didn't go visit their dad behind prison walls. Every single person yeah, I have never have, been to uh, multiple fathers in their household. They got 10 siblings with 10 different daddies. That's not everybody. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's some. That's not everybody. So I get that, too. I would probably have to say that I wish that uh, other cultures understood about our culture, our blackness. Uh, is definitely what's probably come to play here recently mm -hmm. and it's still diving along with exactly what you just said but that it is that we weren't given a fair start no. and as far as we have come it is because of our perseverance and our mm -hmm. own individual to succeed it's not because society or the government helped us you know, right. 400 years ago, as I keep saying, we were slaves. We were no education. We didn't speak this language. We had no rights. And it wasn't until the last 50, 60 years that we even as black women had rights and could go work. So when you think about how far we have come in such a yeah. short amount of time, but we are on the same judgment level of our right. other counterparts, 
That's not us. When other nationalities and cultures come to this country, they're given so many other uh, assistance, whether mm-hmm. that's financial, whether that is uh, any type of, I don't know, particular place to stay, even the, the cohesiveness of the unit, other cultures, Italian, right. Irish, Chinese, Asian. When you come from this and you come from another country and you come over here, there's a unit, there's a collective we're going to help you. We don't even know you, but you're my sister. You're my brother. We right. don't do that. We don't do that at all. Uh, matter of fact, uh, that's a whole other conversation. We are very, <laughs> we do not hand up. We are crabs in the bucket. We're not going to help each other oh, out. God. You got to make it on your own, sister. Figure it out. Uh, and I wish that they understood that, whether that is uh, education, Mm-hmm. being taken away as far as that you're going to have to assist and that 30% has now been removed or whether it is uh, places to stay, job right. opportunity, as great and successful as we are, it is without assistance or a handout. Correct. And we got to work twice as hard, so three times as hard. hard. We work very hard to get ahead and we were not given any type of foundation to do that. Uh, even if you're white and poor and live in a trailer park and you walk outside in the dirt, you get the privilege because you are white. And I'm sorry. Right. That is, that is, it, it, that's a difference. If me and you both go in for a job education and I just gave you those dynamics and I'm college educated, black homeowner, and I drive in with my Mercedes and you can walk in with your dirty feet, they're still nine times out of ten going to give you that job. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it's magical being black. I don't want to say difficult because when we do come together, the like minds, Ooh. it is, it is amazing. I mean, alone homecoming at HBCU, like I went to a, a white, a predominantly white school and I'm like, this is your homecoming. <laughs> But when you go to a black one, oh baby, privilege! But I was able to attend my sister. My sister and I are four years apart. I did the traditional college education path. I was a track athlete, and she did academics. And she uh, was able to go to two different HBCUs. So I was able yes. to cover her games. I was like, I, yeah, hey, it is live. Nobody see again. I keep telling you, I'm an athlete, so I love watching a football game. And this is when yeah. I realized visiting her school that nobody come. Football game, girl. No, girl. We came in a party. We we this with the we with the band. steppers. We with the major we with the, rats. We with the. Yes. Was, I'm like, is the band gonna ever stop playing? What they No, doing? girl. Said, no, they battling. I was like, this is live. Wow. It's a party. Yes. That's what I said, but when we come, when the like minds come together, <laughs> man, oh man, you are you are not stopping us. That's why I'm. That's why I was so heartbroken when I came out at two HBCUs. I'm like, every black person's not like this. No, and I can understand that you had a unit, a cohesiveness. I mean, even amongst the the students themselves, even the students, students, the teachers, the the, my the president. Um, I saw everything. Like I was my my mom was very hesitant of me going, but man, oh man, when I came out, I was man, I'm about to soar out of the United States of America. <laughs> very pro black I love it I think yes like, I didn't get and it's funny because I also went to a pre, pretty much a traditional all white school we lived in the suburbs we're like the fourth black family in that suburb oh my god very very <laughs> melanin challenge and the fact that I did went on a higher education in uh, basically all white school and even my, my corporate jobs until I left corporate America were I'm the only I'm, I'm just used to being the only in those positions. I was the only. This is it. Until I started to work for that one lady that I said there was an African-American woman. And oh, I have wow. never done it again. I didn't have, like I said, I didn't have a good experience with her. Yikes. Did not have a good experience with her. Well, everyone who has worked for me, I can call them back. That's good. <laughs> Ex- yeah. I, I can call them back. So That's good. I like that. And I know I'm not going to judge our African American managers. At no, all. yeah, no. Just, but I, again, I I think she truly, and I'm saying this was just bipolar. I think she was one of those. And I'm not saying that as a as a jab. I'm saying I think she really should have been on somebody's medications. And there are sometimes I look back and I wonder because I was in my 20s. I was wondering if she was actually drinking. There are sometimes I just wonder because depending on her mood, I think she, 
that mood set the whole office. So if she had had something her to sip on, she came mm -hmm. in, she was happy and good. She didn't get that drink in her yet. She was a little agitated, aggravated. Oh, God. Child. I hope y'all enjoyed this moody episode because I love it. You went all over the place. <laughs> I love it. This is my type of girls not out. Make sure you guys like the video trying to get us in the algorithms because we are back. I am back. I yeah. am rejuvenated. Like the video, comment down below. We want to hear your thoughts. Sh and sharing is caring. Share, share it to another girl and another girl yeah. and another girl and another girl. Bring along. Let's be in one big old happy family, okay? Feel free to join All right. In. Yes. Thanks All right. Yes. Great being here. And it's so much fun. Come it along. Fun. All right, girl. Bye. 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 <laughs> <Inter> -bye. <laughs>